So let us start. First, again, the announcement, the spoon still works the way spoon works. But I was told that you have to hold it somewhere here, not to put it on two chairs away. Otherwise, the magic goes. Talk to the spoon, yes. Uh, first. Second of all, I uh, discovered that some people um, did not quite understand how the algorithm works, or at least the mean to, even in broad terms. There are apparently several people who think that what you could do is to find mean and second mean by doing divide and conquer in the following way. You split it in two. You, you find mean and second mean of the first half. You find mean and second mean of the second half. And then you merge them together doing probably two comparisons. It sounds very elegant, and it's all very recursive, and people think that if it's recursive, it's going to be fast. But let us think about how many comparisons it's going to do. Anyone else how many comparisons it's going to do? Let us think. Okay? It's all very, very simple. You know, people tend not to, you know, let us use simple mathematics. We know that we start with n guys, and we will need to convert this first level of n guys into pairs of, you know, first second. So we need one comparison. So all together to do this first round, ah, I'm trying to extract, uh, to do the first round, we will need n over two comparisons. Everybody agrees with that. Just the people at the bottom. So we got now these pairs. To combine the pairs, let us look at the second round of our tournament. To combine the pairs, how many pairs do we have n over 2? Yes? How many games do we need? n over 4. But every game is going now to take two comparisons. Do, do you agree with that? Right? So we're actually going to have another n over 2 comparisons. How many do we have left now? We have n over 4 pairs, yes? And to combine them, we will need n over, uh, what did I say? n over 8, but every, uh, every match does two, two comparisons. So it's going to be plus n over 4, and so on. There is this wonderful thing, and so on. So this is n over 2, n over 4, n over 8, n over 16. What is it going to be? Anybody wants? N. Well, n minus 1, most likely, yes? Right. So we're going to have n over 2 plus n minus 1 comparisons. Right? And that's not what we're trying to accomplish. Right? So divide and conquer doesn't always do what we think. There is an assumption that it's always good. It's not always good. It's, it could be just as slow as, as, as you like. Uh, in this particular case, it's not what we want to do. You see, our idea, let me again sort of remind you what our central idea, is that we want first to play the full tournament without a single extra match. That is, we want to play how many games? N minus 1, because N minus 1 is what we need to find a winner. Right? And then, since our plan is that tournament will be organized as a binary tree, the winner, the winner is going to 
uh, win log n games. And we'll look at all of the people he played against him, and we will find the second. Everybody agrees in principle that's what we're trying to do. Okay? Now, let us quickly see again. We, we sort of didn't quite have time. You should have done some of it yourself, but let's assume that you didn't. Let us look at our counter thing. Remember we wrote this two very important functions. Add to counter and Bob, be our guest. Find this place. So we have we have two functions for adding to counter and then to reducing counter. And we wrote them as standalone algorithm because we basically didn't want to decide how we could implement them as an encapsulated object. But now let us implement them when we are done with this, when we have these two things. Could we somehow shift it a little bit up so that we see uh, at least the signature? Ah. Uh, there's no, no way. I want to see both signatures, but somehow. Maybe make a little small. Thank you. Very clever. Okay? So let us let us again. Let us look at what we have. We have add to counter, which takes things and adds them to counter, and they grow logically and shift. This is this is this wonderful thing. Again, sort of those of you who miss classes, who don't know. Study this code. It's, you know, Param agrees with me. It's very beautiful. Is it a very beautiful code? It's a very beautiful code. Right? It's one of the most beautiful things there is in computer science. And then we have reduce. It's a less beautiful, but nevertheless, equally, equally important thing. So let us see how we could encapsulate and what would be the idea of encapsulation. Okay, so let me now here, I will look for a victim. Paul, do your job. You know, he's a neutral guy. He'll just find someone. And Let's see, have we had you for a while? No, 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 no. There is no thing like that. No, no, no. <laughs> Hello, Tom. Hello, Alex. So, uh, you have to hold it like so, so people could hear all your mumblings. So uh, our goal right now is to put these two algorithms. Well, you don't know what these algorithms are, I suspect. Uh, uh, it's not, I mean, do we explain it to him? I think we need to explain it to him instead of letting him get away without doing work. So uh, let, us, let us take a look at this thing. What we are trying to do, we are trying to find a way to add things where add is some combining operation. And we even use some terrible mathematical word. It is an associative operation. So we could regroup things, right? So we want to combine things in a such a way that we never add too many things. We, we, we unbalance things. We want very balanced way of adding them. Right? And the way we do it, we say that we're going to keep these things in a binary counter. It's a counter. And in every bit of the counter, we're going to keep thing of size logically, well, let's say one, two, four, eight, and so on. And we will attempt always add things only when they are of the same size. So that's what we do. You see, when we add things to counter, 
we go and say, well, we haven't reached the end of the counter. Right? And first points to some, some place here. Probably in the beginning it points here. It's the first bit. That's a likely thing. So, and then we say, if whomever lives in the first, that's called dereferencing, is equal to zero. Zero is something which designates that this bit is empty. If it's zero, then we will just stick whatever we have in the corresponding bit. Now, it's a bit is a place which allows you to keep value of this type. Right? It's, uh, it could be a very large bit. These things could be gigantical trees or whatever they are. For example, there is a very advanced data structure called binomial Q, where these things are going to be in every bit. There will be a tree called binomial tree, and then this thing will give you a binomial forest. We'll eventually meet them. But in the meanwhile, we don't know what they are. You could s literally assume that they're just bits. It will just work. Assume that operation is plus. Assume that 0 is 0. And then what you do, you do, you stick carry into the first, and you return 0. Basically, you found a place. You are done. If not, you combine. If not, what you know is what you came is a thing of size 1. This thing here is of size 1 in the first bit. You combine them together with a combining operation. And you zero the bit. And you move along. So you keep going and going and going till you find a place. If you don't, you return the carry. This is carry propagate. But it's a very generalized carry propagate. Yes? And let me revisit, since it's as important as it comes, let, let me revisit the second thing. Let's assume we constructed this thing. Now we have a bunch of bits. We could reduce counter. We could find the combination of these bits. How do we do it? We say, first we find first non-zero bit. And we start it. If we don't, we return 0. There is no, no bits. Otherwise, we pick it as a result. We start accumulation in the result. And then we go find all the bits and combine them with our operation. So what is the tricky thing? Remember, the tricky thing is that we have to Order these things like that. It's first the thing from the bit, and then the result. Why is that? Anybody remembers? Tom, could you venture a guess? Yes. What do we know about this operation? It's associated. But it's not what? We don't know if it's commutative. Therefore, order is important. Why it's the right order? Because the operation was as you were doing right addition. When you accumulate the bits, you're going. Yes, that, that is the very important point. That the guys further to the right came there earlier than the guys further to the left. Therefore, when you are accumulating, keep the guys from the left on the right. It's tricky, but that's how it is, because the guys further into the counter are earlier guys. That's the nature of the counter. Now, Tom, you will have to 
use your programming powers. What we want to do, we want to take these two guys and combine them into an object. Could we do that? Sure. OK. So uh, could you do me a favor, show the other one? The signature, the, the, the first signature. Uh, OK. So looking at this signature, what should this object contain? What, what is the state of the counter? Now let us, let us see. We have two beautiful algorithms. But they're stateless. Everything is outside. And this is what we should always do. No matter what we have been taught in software engineering classes by very wise object-oriented professors, you start with algorithms. You don't start with objects. Figure out what, what is that you're going to do. But you don't have to stop with algorithms. You could then put things together into an object. So what is the state of this thing? Here, the guy with the spoon. Um, it's the iterator of all of the values that you are accumulating. Is it the iterator? Finally, of course, we did the iterator here because it's also very easy when you write an algorithm to have this minimal iterator interface. But for an object, what would it have inside? Type T. It would be a base value of, type, of base type. Uh, yeah, but what would it have in the state of the object? Yeah, what did he say? He said the counter. I think he's right. He shouldn't have said it. You should have said it. But what he said is right. I mean, now here we, we sort of externalize the counter. We put him out. We say, we don't want to know about him. We're just algorithmic people. But now we turn around. You see, the entire thing is that you always come up with some principles. Like, I'll have no state. You use this great principle for about five, time, five minutes. You are very functional and no state. But then you turn around and deal with the state. So counter should live in this object. There's some kind of this thing. Right? And could you suggest an implementation? type T. Well, how could it be a variable of type T? How many elements of type T do you do? It would be, yeah, it would be a vector or an array of type T. Uh, let us figure out. Is it going to be a vector or an array? That is, that is a solution. It could be, why does he say it's a small fixed sign? Why do you think you, don't we have, you know, large things to reduce with billions and billions of elements? But he still thinks that he could get by with small size. Why does he think that? <coughs> you're storing the, uh, uh, the logarithm, you're storing the log of the value. Exactly. Because the log will never get greater than what? There's absolute limit in our computers. The log will never get greater than? Well, guys, that was 15 years ago. 64. Uh, yeah. so, so what I actually suggest that we do both. Because both of them. Uh, very simple and instructive. We would do one. We should be able to do another one uh, in five minutes. Okay? And I think it's easier to do it with a vector. Slightly easier to do it with a vector. Right? So, so it will have this vector for the counter. What else will it have? Look at the interface of the function. That's where you should be. So these two guys will disappear, right? They will be sort of 
what else will disappear? What our friend there, who shouldn't be talking, of course, but you know, he wants to show that he, he's, he gets it. He says that zero should be once and for all put inside the object. Why? They, have, they may be different zeros for different types that I use. That having this is true, but why could we put it inside the object and get it out of the interface of whatever will be it? Nobody could change the zero in the middle of computation. That will, the whole thing will stop making sense. So if I do one add, imagine I'm using this function. And after, you know, first I add with one zero, then I make five being zero. And it's not going to work. We have to assume that zero is fixed for the duration of computation. Everybody agrees? Ah, uh, no, that I don't believe at all. Why do you mean it? D d <laughs> but who lives in the counter? Of what? Of what? Of type T. So uh, it has to be something of type T, some marker of type T, which we designate to be zero. That's one more thing, guys. Why? Yes, it would be very silly. If we go along, we use plus, and then we change it to multiplication. I mean, we could use it with multiplication. We could use it with plus, but not intermittently. So this, OK? So now let us, I think we discussed everything. So anybody wants to suggest a name for this thing? Let us start writing the code. You could actually use the board, or you could dictate. If you say it in the microphone, the words will appear. We have very advanced technology. In the OK, cool. I have a voice recognition here. Voice recognition. OK, so I probably want it to be a uh, start with a template. That's a good idea. Always start with it. That's, if you learn one thing, always start with a template. Be lazy. All right, so template type name T. Type name T. Uh, Hello, guys. The uh, type name I and type name op. Uh, do we need type name I? No, I don't know. Think about it. When you're going to be constructing it, are you going to be Passing it to iterator? Probably not. What you are going to be using as an iterator? Just uh, array, you know, the vector. Vector iterator, which you will have there. You know. You know. So you don't need I. Uh, some, did you say type name op? You did say type name op. I haven't heard, but you did. Anything else? Well, it's very simple. Since I just rejected I, there is nothing else. OK? Is it going to be a struct or a class? That can say, I mean, you know, you will get the spoon. You will get the spoon. That can show <coughs> my great prowess. Yes. I always use class. Why would you use class? We spend some time figuring out when to use class, when to use struct. I always use class. And you are wrong. <laughs> no, that is a very silly thing. Well, I always use class, so therefore. No. No, no, no. Explain. I mean, it actually, guys, let me even say, it is class. <laughs> it is class, but why? 
uh, it has, it has, in my view, it, it's going to have methods associated with it. You can have access. Methods, methods have nothing to do with classes. That's right. That's right. You want the type checking. I'd want to have right. the type checking. No, oh, both of them provide you with type checking. Identical. You are allowed to use what they say. I didn't hear, so. Uh, OK, keep guessing. What is the difference between class and struct? Uh, let's see, classes have private methods, and structs don't. Uh, actually, both classes and structs could have private and public methods. The default for struct is that there are no private methods, and that's where it needs to be used. Does it private state? Does this thing have private state? What is the private state? The private state is the value, the base, the value of the counter is private state. Yeah, because why? <laughs> but. You do not want people to go and mark your counter. This is your truly private stuff. People have no business writing in a corresponding bit. Right? Now, we know that we don't want people to change our zero and our operation. Therefore, they need to be private. Right? So tell us, OK, so class. Let us name it. What do we name it? The file name tells you. Uh, I think binary count is an awfully good name because we already use it for a class. Yeah. Well, on top, it's right here. Yeah. Yeah. You need to sit close. So uh, binary counter, what comes after that? Uh, let's see, binary counter. T. Well, I'll certainly need to define the. Uh, well, you need to define a brace. No, no it's good. He wants to define a brace. Uh, and my, my preference, this is what I think we nowadays do is that for functions, we put brace here. But for classes and struct, we put it in a separate line. And don't ask me why. This is, I think that's the preferred way for Dan. Might be preferred way for Paul. I no longer remember. I, you know, I have, but. OK, let me tell you, and this is, I have multiple witnesses. When I work in a certain community, like say I work with Paul, I try very quickly to agree on all the conventions, whatever they are. And I am convention neutral in the sense, if Paul will tell me that's how we're going to put braces, that's how we'll put braces. But we have to, again, we have to get to a point where our code looks interchangeable. Remember the story about Rich and Thompson in the beginning? Right? We want to get to that point. So one thing I, you know, obviously we have all these free artists at A9 who want to write code which doesn't look like anybody else's code. I'm not one of them. I really want to get to the point where my code looks like everybody else's code. Well, actually, I want everybody else's code. <laughs> but by the account. OK. What would we do? Let us think what we will need to define here. We we'll have to define some members, yes? And I would say here, I will help Tom a little bit. We don't need to say private. We don't, right? But I will. Why? Because I don't know whether you guys remember what the default rule is. That is, I, my, my preference is always to say these are private things, these are public things. Unless it's a struct with no private things, when I, I do not say public, it was sort of silly. So private, and what are we going to have? I, 
need a vector, I need to represent, I need to, to, to declare the vector that I'm going to store the state of the counter. Declare it. Okay, so it is, uh, it is a vector of type T. Uh, it's probably a standard vector, is it? Yeah, probably standard vector. He wants a standard vector, he said. What? We could use array. We will use arrays. But let's learn to use vector. It's, you know, it's simpler. And what we'll call it? Counter. I grant you that. That's a very good name. Then what else are we going to have? Okay, let's see. I need to represent, I need to have as part of the state the zero. You need the zero. Of what type is a zero? Type T. Yeah. So type T zero. He, said, he doesn't know how to spell zero. Oh, he does? Oh, he does. Now I need to find the my operation. And what would you call it? Uh, my, the operation I would call it would probably be plus or sum. Nah, call it op. Because it's not plus. You could say combine, but I think op op is just such an elegant difficult thing. Isn't it? Right? Do we need anything else? I have, well, first of all, I have to. I probably need a constructor. Do you need anything in the state? Do we? I would say no. He said no. So just say public. There's no more. We're done with private state. OK. I put private and then follow public. So I need to define a constructor for the client. Okay, he wants a constructor. Tell us what the constructor is. Well, the constructor would uh, set, um, would take as a, first of all, it needs the zero and the op. It needs to be passed the zero and the op. And, and it, anything else? No. Let us think about it, but let us first write it and then we'll think about it. I mean, unless you want to start with a, uh, a, a How do you write? Tell us how to write a constructor. How do I write the constructor? Yes. So I would have the, uh, uh, so pass in the, define the constructor. What is it called? It's called the name of the class. Yes, well, let's call it the name of the class. And which arguments will it take? It will take, well, I've defined since I've said that it takes the zero and the op, it will take the Will it take the zero of the op or op and zero? Well, there is an argument, believe it or not, that it should first take an op and then zero. Why? Because eventually we'll discover that maybe, in many cases, we could construct it just from an op. Because operation might know it's zero. We will learn. We don't need to do it today. So let us, and then we could default the second. So this is why operation fundamentally, for example, if we pass it plus, what's the zero? Zero. If we pass a time, what's the zero? One. Right? So there are cases where we could figure out without. So I would recommend that order. Yes. So how would you how would you pass them? I would pass them as um, let's see. Const. They would be, the operator would be a const, um, the 
function would be a const function, probably a, uh, a ref to it or something. Well, here there is a two conventions which collide. There is a standard convention that arguments to constructors are passed as by const reference, never by value. That's a general rule, because you don't want to, to construct before you start a construction. But then there is a second convention, that function objects throughout STL are passed by value. Why? Because they're cheap. They're usually so very cheap, they have absolutely nothing in them. So two conventions. Which one wins? The more general one. Because in this particular case, since it's going to be in line, there is no harm. And I claim that in general, the more general rule that let's pass everything by should win here. So I would just say const op op, believe it or not. We could reuse the name. There is a thing not known to most people and slightly bizarre, but allows for pretty code. This op is in the outer scope and has nothing to do with this op. So op, and then we need to pass zero. How do we pass zero? By value, by? I would pass that by value. No. That is clearly wrong because you could assume that op is tiny, it's a function object, shouldn't carry much. T is anything. It could be 129 bytes long. Could be, it's just an arbitrary T. You don't want to pass big things by value before you put them where they go. Right? So for sure here without any reservation. Const ref, so I would be const, const T ref zero. And yes. And then what do we say? Len colon. Yes, very good. And let's see, I need you, I want to say. Say uh, the most self-evident thing. No, you do not want to. You want to initialize. How do you do it? Let us here let let me a little bit just say what we write. Do not just syntactically could you How, how would you do it? Just how, what would you type? What would you type, the sequence of characters? No, no, no. Never ever use assignment. The magic sequence, let me first tell you what the magic sequence of characters is, then we'll look what the meaning is. What you say is OP, open paren, OP, close paren, comma, ZERO, open paren, ZERO, close paren, brace, brace. We'll need to put something in the brace, maybe, but maybe not. All right. So, let us figure out. We all. I already discovered that people do not have a firm difference. By the way, let us see what happens if instead of that we write the following: new line. Op. 
equal up. Or let us, let us change it to x because we entered the block, so it will up x. What's the difference? And we don't, and we don't write this. Semantically, what's the difference? We do two things. We first call a default constructor, do a lot of stuff creating default constructor work, and then overwrite it. Do we want to do it? No. We want to do just initialization. That's what these guys allow us to do. Right? Because your model of computation is that when you enter, you don't have any objects or anything. You have raw bits. And they need to be formed into typed stuff. So they could be formed by a constructor here. If you don't do it, if you do, could we go back to the assignment with x just for a sec? What happens here? This is actually equivalent to saying op, open paren, close paren. And then assignment. Right? There still will be a constructor implicitly constructing default value there, which we don't need. We're saving an operation, potentially expensive. But it's also good for us to know what is going on. Yes? So everybody understands what we're doing? Yeah? Didn't we? No, no, no. Uh, how were they? Oh, yeah, yeah, it should. I mean, sorry. I, you know, I, I do not have, actually, eyes on my back. So I occasionally do, do, not, do not do that. Right? So, OK. What about the vector? Does it? Does it need to be? What does it, what will happen here if just, could you put this brace right here? Back, back, to show that there is nothing. We, we're not going to do anything at all. No body in the constructor. What will happen with the vector? Get an empty vector. It's not particularly bad, by the way. It's an empty vector. Somebody might argue that, well, we seldom need an empty vector. That we might pick some size. Anybody wants to argue for which size should it be? OK. Let me, Tom, what's your opinion, by the way? Yeah. There will be a size of the vector. What do you mean? You're not going to be doing that. What are going to be, by the way, this very, let us forget, let's forget all this. We will come back. This is the question we will not answer this second. Let us wait and figure out what are other methods in this thing? Does it have methods? What else do we need to provide? Yeah. Do we need to provide a destructor? Virtual destructor. <laughs> no. Virtual for sure not. But a destruct why don't we need to provide a destructor? What will default one do? Exactly right. And that's what we need to do. With it's perfectly fine. Do we need to write an assignment operator?
unless you know why don't do it. The default one will just work. Right? The same goes for copy constructors. So we're pretty much done. There, but it should be other methods. You know. This thinking computer wants other methods. What are other methods? How many methods do you think it should have? Two methods, they say. They can respond to what? To two algorithms which we got. Right? It's not, not for two. Okay. So anybody wants to name the first method? I think it's too much. Because you're going to write counter or whatever, add. You, know. you might as well to call it add. Uh, OK, so what will it return? Let's write the signature. Tom, Boris says that it will return T. Do you agree with him? What? Add to counters, right here. Should it? Should it? Why are we returning? Why does our algorithm return carry? Because it's run out of bits. Are we going to run out of bits here? There are lots of bits there. You know. Let me tell you a bad news. No food. Uh, yet. Uh, so, anybody wants to try? Tom, help. How, I mean, now forget all the preconceived notion. You're building this device. How do you want device to work? Yes, but which method will return the value of the counter? Yes. I'll go along. Think about it. We're building a box. In this box, we throw things one after another for as long as we like. And it just eats them up. We don't want to get anything else. And then there is a button. They reduce. We push a button, and it spits out the results. Isn't it beautiful? Because it's very beautiful. Isn't it? We could compete with Steve Jobs for elegance of our design, you know, especially if we make it made in China. So uh, that's a necessary prerequisite for beautiful design, according to Steve Jobs. Americans cannot make what? Product. Yes, it's designed in Cupertino, made in China. I forget, guys. I forget. Assembled in China. <laughs> So let's try to assemble it here. Assembled in Palo Alto. So let us assemble this. Kya! You're doing very well, so why not? Yeah.
Do we need to pass up to it? Do we need to pass zero to it? Do we need to pass iterators to it? No, we have to pass something. <laughs> Otherwise, I mean, so what do we pass? Uh, by the way, guys, there is a bug. Uh, no, there is no bug. Yes? By the way, anybody remembers why we passed this by const reference and this by value? You don't count. Because, and inside, we need this variable anyways. So we decided to combine creating a local variable and passing it the same thing, saving one line. So, we will need similar thing here, wouldn't we? But I wouldn't call it carry because here it's carry, but the carrying is hidden in the algorithm. So I'll just call it like X or V. I'll call it X. Come on. X's and Y's, that's my youth. I grew up with X's and Y's. What's the type? T, he says. He probably means capital T. Huh? Yes. So now, what are we going to do in the code? But it's going to return something. Which is good. So what are you going to do with it? Let me figure out. Where will you put it? How do you know whether it's zero or not? But should you sort of keep it in your hands first? Keep it in your hands. Okay, guys. Could I help him? Help him. You know the answer. No, no, no. It's too early to push back. Well, I mean, it's going to return. We need, okay, let us, before we return, let us write the call. You say, add to counter, right? And what, let's pass the argument. You need first, last. Which is called what? No, 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 no. It has a name. You gave it a name. Counter that what? Begin. Open, put, and close. Yeah. And what's the other one? Yeah, that is probably true. Now you even know how to use a vector. That's an accomplishment. You know, maybe if we keep like we'll have a nine programmer learning about using vectors. The most frequently used things in the world. Uh, there are billions and billions of uses of vectors. Unbelievable. And what do we pass after that? And yes, yeah. 
just so this is pretty straightforward guys but again now what do we need to do we need to save the result how do you save results of a function so what do we write here I wouldn't. Good. Are you ever going to use this guy again? X. No, he's lost. He went through this thing. He was edit combined. Reuse the name. Right. Yes. Now we're good. Now we need to think of what do we do after? There is some logic. So there are two cases. Either x is 0 or x is. If x is 0, what do we do? We don't need to do anything. So we don't even need any condition that way, because there's nothing to be done. So if x is not 0, then what we need to do is to append. We need to allocate another. We need to grow the vector. How do you grow the vector? Ah, should I tell you how to grow the vector? OK, anybody know? Do push back, you think? I think so, too. That's how you do it. You say what? Guys, you know, there's advanced C++ things we are learning. How to open thing to a vector. Uh, push back what? Do we need to do anything else? Which spaces? Braces, you mean like this need to go? Yeah, probably. Yeah. I would agree. I would put it on a single line. And I will not write a comment because this does grow a vector. You know, I have friends who love writing comments like you write x equal y. They put slash slash assigned y to x. That's very informative, but I don't think it's necessary. Uh, There's a question. Yeah. So, Alex, if you if add took its parameter my construct and you declared a new local for the result of all, then you, there would be one less copy happening. If you're passing x by value into this method, but then I will have to use. Yes, but I need I need a copy of the what returns anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I I need. Okay, you see, this is this is my my logic. I I'm quite prepared to do what you suggest, but if we write const tf x. I'll have to write ty. And there will be another thing on the stack, larger. I don't have to do it. You say it probably doesn't matter. Maybe not. But I don't quite know it yet. No, there will be one less stuff. It's called with constant. This calls with value, by value. Yeah. And it's called by value because we're going to use it. What, what, what? Well, yes, I can. Yes, I can. We'll just create a value. No, it's, it's, 
Now, what John proposes, okay, I am just into this annually retentive saving of variables of the stack. It's, it's not necessary. What Paul proposes is just. Having the compiler create the TX for you, the compiler can divide that in situations where it knows that's an R value. So it's actually more performant to let the compiler do the copy for you than to make your own. I don't understand how it relates to this. This is, you're talking about returning. Well, I'm not returning anything. No, I'm talking about being passed in. Yes. So. If you if you were to do what was being suggested by making the yes. X a reference and creating your own, there's a copy that must happen there. But it's possible for the compiler to alive the copy that's being passed in. So doing it yes. this way can prevent that copy. Uh, yes. 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 But the compiler could elide it when it passes to that. This is going to be inlined anyways. Okay, guys, if you want to do it, this is not something I'm going to argue. Do it their way. If you want to pass it by construct and... Guys, it doesn't matter, honestly speaking. But, you know, this is, everybody understands this guy? Tom, before the food is there, so you have quickly write reduce. Okay, so we need a function reduce. Reduce returns, I believe, returns T. If I remember, I, I can't see the header. I mean, the, the, the signature, thank you. The signature is the same as the other one, except no carry passed in. So, does it take any arguments? Does it take any arguments? It takes no arguments, he says. That's really easy to f figure out. And you take no arguments by value or by reference? Yes. Yes to both. Yes to both. Yes to both. Okay, and so now um, uh, this is going to return <coughs> uh, let's see, I'm going to call I, well, th I need to call reduce counter. Huh? No, no, you need to return it. So return reduce counter. Okay, and now I'm going to be passing it the counter dot I would say the same stuff as before, guys. Except no, except no carry. Except no carry. No carry. This is why I thought you could, might as well finish. Okay. And now the freedom for Tom. Pass this put. Thank you very much. Give it to your neighbor. Give it to your neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> You did it? All right, now we go eat. <laughs>